There's such an incredible diversity of people here and you enter into a conversation accidentally and it sort of snowballs into something that you've never really considered or given much thought to but it is so stimulating on its own merits. The power is shifting back to Asia and I see Australia and China both uh, relying on each other for the economy, energy and also other sectors. delegates are from different fields, they have different backgrounds, so I believe our communication can bring me, bring me lots of new ideas. I want to know more about Australia. I guess I'm really looking forward to um, meeting other like-minded people who work on China and Australia. Welcome everyone to day one of the third Australia-China Youth Dialogue. A week of a lot of interesting discussion, joined by a lot of very eminent panellists, uh, keynote speakers from across the spectrum of Australia-China relations. The idea is to really generate a really open discussion so that we really understand what's going right in the relationship, what's going wrong, how can we as young people improve it, what constructive action can we take to advance this very important relationship. The highlight today was actually speaking very candidly in a small group format with some of the speakers. The two most impressive talks I learned is one from, from, from Professor Song. The other is from John. He seems to be an expert in Chinese politics systems. So far I have learned a great deal from our Chinese counterparts here at the Dialogue about um, what their views of the Australia-China relationship are. An important reason for China's reluctance to introduce carry out a structural reform domestically, but at the same time to devalue that. This morning we've been out and about. The first stop of the day has been the Confucius Temple here in Beijing. The Kong Miao was actually constructed in the Yuan Dynasty, and so far we've have been having a, a remarkably interesting tour among first the, the Kong Miao and now the Guo Zidian. Uh, so today is uh, going to be a little bit of um, traditional Confucian culture in the morning, followed by some uh, cultural immersion in the contemporary Beijing art scene in the afternoon. So following Professor Douglas Kirsten's speech, so we've asked that they break off into six groups. The onus is on them to try and resolve common misunderstandings which uh, exist between Australia and China. You know, in the past, I think so-called Westerners, they are the same. But Australian people is more uh, gentle and they don't speak very loudly. I think I like them. <laughs> this is a mixture of fun and um, insightfulness. Are you constantly being challenged with different? thoughts and ideas about China and Australia and I guess life in general in many ways. So this morning we got up at an ungodly hour and uh, got on the bus and went to Jingshan Park and we tried our hand at some Taiji with the Jingshan Park Taiji group. So I guess it's an interest of mine as a, as a professional athlete but also in terms of my study and, and my interest in cultural diplomacy. I think sport has, has something of a potential to bring people together. pushing beyond the superficial to really get um, to, to enhance, I suppose, um, an understanding among young Australians in particular about the culture, the history, the society, the political institutional life of China. Let's stop talking about iron ore and let's talk about some, some other interesting things. It's not something that like every every company or can do with like an international focus, I suppose, is just have opportunities to transfer overseas. I think there's no replacement, there's no substitute for really living in another culture and, and experiencing. Since 
second us. We got hard. 对中国的出口依赖度是一样的。What we've got going on here is a crisis simulation or a war gaming exercise, right? So all the delegates have broken into teams. They're representing different countries. Chinese fishermen have been killed by pirates in the South China Sea disputed waters, and the Chinese Navy are trying to save them right on the border of the Philippines. They've got to work out how they're going to resolve the situation, how they're going to represent their country. In order to do this kind of thing, probably, they, oh, we're being interrupted by a public statement. <laughs> Goes from when are being challenged. Uh. Hi, we're up to Chengdu. I'm going to see pandas. I can't wait. We call it in Chinese Lao Gan Bu Liao Yang Yuan. So we have a lot of trees, bamboos, uh, great shade, uh, very clean air. I learnt that pandas are incredibly uh, lazy. They kind of like the path of least resistance sort of animals. They just eat um, and prop themselves up with, with trees or the ground. Australia is in the midst of the Asian century. There's huge amounts of opportunity there for us. There's also a lot of risk and a lot of competition too from comparative competitive nations. One of the great things is that you know, years and years down the track, we will have this great network of people that we can pull on. Yeah, you know, when we're battling through issues in the Australia-China relationship, or just want to kind of bounce ideas off and kind of start something new or exciting. Edgy, uh, diverse, strategic, energizing, enjoyable, challenge, awesome, overwhelming, incredibly sleep deprived, diversity, budding, crazy, <laughs> extraordinary. <laughs>